very good morning to everyone. I am Suvadra, and I'm here to talk about how um, a little color and play can make a change to our adult lives. Yeah, our adult life, like um, super caught up with work, with studies, with our businesses, right? And increasingly, what are we doing uh, when we are not so caught up with all of this? Uh, social media, like log on to Facebook, uh, you know, watch two people fight about Karva Chauth. Or uh, close our home, uh, like watch two people argue about who's the greatest of all time, A.R. Rahman or Ilay Raja. <laughs> so this person whom I just described, uh, that was me until a couple of years ago. So I will come back from like a 10 hour work day and I would log on to Facebook and obsess over where people are holidaying or uh, what they're cooking for dinner, or what people are fighting about on Twitter. My evenings would be just that. And then, very suddenly, uh, in 2014, I discovered this uh, artist side to myself. I started painting. Uh, so initially, it was at a very basic level. Um, you know, I would paint a pen stand, I would paint a jug, a kettle, gift it to close friends, family members. Uh, you know, it was just putting a bunch of colors together, some patterns together. It was at that level. And then, as I was painting, you know, there was something else that really drew me uh, and fascinated me. It was about how uplifting it can be when a set of colors come together. And as I kept painting over these years, uh, you know, it really brought a different meaning to my hobby. It was not just a time pass anymore. And uh, I started, you know, learning a few Indian art forms, uh, Madhubuni, Gond, Patachitra, Pichwai. And in these art forms, I then started experimenting, you know, how can I maintain the essence of this art form and yet give it a contemporary touch. For example, this is just a set of coasters that I painted, uh, which I called it the She series about the set of women, there's a working woman, there's a student, there is an artist, or a rock band. So I tried to maintain the essence of Madhubani, but yet give it a different feel to it. Or this sketch, for example, which I did when I traveled to Paris, you know, just this girl watching the Eiffel Tower. So I would, uh, so I would uh, explore more and more, and a lot of feedback that I got from people actually urged me to experiment with you know different ideas. So then sometime last year, towards the end of last year, my husband Balaji, uh, who's also here in the audience, uh, so the both of us went abroad and we visited this bookstore and we came across this really huge section on uh, adult coloring books. Um, now we knew adult coloring books existed in India, a couple of them, but until we went there, we had, we had no clue of uh, you know, what a, huge phenomenon it had become. Um, so we spent some time observing this section, uh, the, the really popular ones like Secret Garden by Johanna Basford, if some of you color here, or uh, some of the less known books, but you know, those that were equally so fascinating. S and as we started observing these books, um, I really got the answer to my question as to actually what makes an adult pick up a book like that and color. You know, last we all colored was way back in our primary school or something, right? So I will be coming to that in a bit, but, but that's when we said, okay, I think we should definitely work on a book ourselves and uh, work one, like create one, especially for the Indian audience. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, Indian art forms was something that really fascinated me. Their uh, history, the intricacy, their vibrance, everything about it. And uh, an art form like Madhubani especially, I thought, you know, ticked all the boxes for a coloring book. So there we, we had more or less decided on the style of art. And then uh, Balaji suggested, you know, why don't we give this book a narrative instead of just putting a few patterns together? Why don't we give this book a narrative? Just like the coasters you previously saw, we thought it will, it will be nice if the book also is something where each person picks it up and is able to, you know, interpret it their own way, imagine what they want out of it. Um, so with that idea, Balaji wrote the narrative for Shakuntala and her magic box, uh, which is about this girl who, uh, who loves music. 
because music is a theme that allows people to interpret things out of it every time they listen to it, a, you know, a different thing. Or what you may take out of it will be different from what another pe person takes out of it. So he, uh, you know, he wrote the narrative, and then I went about creating the artworks based on the narrative. So here's Shakuntala, her, you know, her house is filled with the sound of music. She's, you know, she's dreaming of music all the time. And, you know, when she dreams of music, she d dances with the stars. So this very uh, dreamy, surreal story based on which I created the artworks over the next four or five months. Um, and earlier this year, we self-published the book. Um, and then when we released the book, uh, and as more and more people bought the book, a lot of people, uh, they started sharing their stories, uh, stories with me. You know, not just pictures of pages from the book that they colored, but actually what they went through, what they experienced as they colored the book. So I just, I mean, and these stories, uh, they taught me how art means something else to, you know, every other person. It's not the same. So I will be sharing a couple of such experiences. So this is Pavitra. So Pavitra is in, in her early 30s. She's a working woman who has a hectic job. Uh, and she discovered coloring. She got into it through, uh, you know, when she first bought Shakuntala and her magic box. But after that, she really got drawn into the activity. So she will come home in the evenings after work. She'll spend about two, three hours coloring. And what really kept her engaged was just, just simply the fun she was having with it. Um, you know, she will spend those two, three hours watching TV or doing something else, coloring, and it just kept her away, f kept her thoughts away from other things that were happening. And she was, she tells me how, um, you know, she's a creatively, she considers herself a creatively challenged person. Uh, she cannot draw, she cannot paint, and this is the closest she can get to feeling creative by coloring. So this is a page from the book that she colored, and she sent it to me, and I'm like, what? Is this what you call creatively challenged? Like, just look at the way she's done it. Now, like Pavitra, there are others who color because, um, who tell me they color because it's either meditative or therapeutic. It helps them relieve themselves of that day's stress. So that's, you know, one set of people. Um, this other story that I want to share with you is something that's, uh, you know, extremely close to me. This is Lakshmi Pati, who is my friend's grandmom. She's 86 years old. Um, so my friend uh, gifted her a copy of the book. And initially, she, you know, he would send me a one page or two pages of what she has colored. And at 86 years old, I did not, I mean, I was really, uh, you know, fascinated by even just that. And then she actually went on to color the whole book. And at the end of it, she sent me this laminated card, uh, which is from a page, I mean, it's a page from the book that she colored with this very touching note, uh, which says, um, you know, this is a page from Subhadra's book that I have colored. I hope I've colored it satisfactorily. And uh, it helped me overcome my loneliness. And thanks a lot for that. Now, um, so when I created the book, I didn't even remotely think that it had the uh, potential to influence someone positively like that. Um, and let me tell you, Lakshmi Party didn't stop with this book. She's now bought herself two, three more adult coloring books. She, you know, she tries to color at least like once in every two, three days. And at her age, um, she doesn't color because, you know, it's fun or something. Her priorities are very different. For her, you know, it's the challenge whether she can actually, you know, color within the boundaries of that little flower. Or she wants to challenge her motor skills to see if she's able to stick within those two lines. And when she does that, there is a sense of accomplishment that she feels. So it's this story and so many stories like this that actually made me come here and, um, you know, voice out as to how art can have multiple interpretations. To me, it's something else. To Pavitra, to Lakshmi Party, it's all something else. And you needn't be, uh, you know, an artist to, to know this. Like, if I didn't work on the book, I definitely would not have uh, 
you know, discovered something like this, or if I didn't begin painting a couple of years ago, I most definitely uh, would not have had this kind of a perspective on things. So I really hope you all to, you know, you're able to interpret art the way you want, and you're able to, you know, discover color, your own play in the things that you do in, you know, in your uh, respective adult lives. Thank you so much.